now, your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Well, hello once again, Cougar Nation. Welcome inside Studio C at BYU TV for another edition of the Sitake Show. We've got a great hour coming up after a great win for the Cougs on the weekend. We invite you to be a part of the show and join the conversation by submitting questions for Kalani on Twitter using hashtag Sitake Show. You can do the same on Facebook and Instagram via the BYU TV sports accounts. Coming up on tonight's broadcast, we'll recap the Cougs' big win at Utah State. We'll discuss the always interesting and evolving quarterback situation. We'll look ahead to Liberty as BYU returns home to face a player with one of the more unique names in college football. We'll find out what uh, BYU's players have to say about the head man. And Deep Blue explores a super fan who's fighting for his life as we visit also with sophomore running back Lopini Katoa in studio. And to get the rundown on the road, let's bring in your head coach, the Cougars, Kalani Sitake. See you guys. <laughs> hey guys, how you doing? Great. See you. Here we go. All right. Happy Monday. Yeah. New yeah. new day, new time uh, tonight, and yeah, we're all adjusting. I come straight from practice. So. Part of the daylight savings thing. We just kind of did every. You changed everything this week. Uh, so every game is important, right? Uh, but some games have a little something extra riding on them. And uh, in these regional rivalry games or in-state games, there is something extra there. It was a sold-out stadium. And your guys responded to everything involved in the environment uh, really well. Agreed? Yeah, I, th I thought the uh, the mindset for our players they they they, uh, they really wanted this game, you know. And you could you could sense it from even the bye week when our guys were preparing and practicing. And uh, I'm just glad that it worked out in, in our favor. And and we made some plays. I, th I thought there were some things we can improve on, but uh, for the most part, just uh, can't really complain about the the result. 42-14 is the result. Uh, the BYU offense was as hot as the temperature was cold. Uh, what a breakout for the guys. 600-plus yards and 40-plus points, and it got going early. Second straight game, Kalan, you've scored a touchdown on your first possession. Yeah, I, I like that. We've got to keep doing that. And, um, you know, I think defensively we got a, a three and out, so that was a good start for the game as well. And, uh, I think and then second just, defensive series, you get this. Yeah, and that, that, you know, J.J. did a great job at stripping the ball and then, and, and, you know, I think uh, Kofensis and Devin were there to get the recovery. BYU might have added to the score, uh, but for a fumble deep. And then uh, Utah State gets back in the game on the ensuing drive. Yeah, and then, you know, we um, made a great pass out the CLC Mariner here and uh, man coverage. And, um, you know, th that was unfortunate that that happened. But, uh, you know, we believe in our guys and sometimes have to put them out there and to cover one on one. Into the second quarter, and Kavika Fonua picks up his second INT of the season. Another linebacker pick for BYU. And then uh, Jaron Hall, nice 16-yard touchdown run. BYU goes up 14-7. to Yeah, really impressed with the offense and the way they, they, they seem to dot up the right plays at the right time and take advantage of the turnovers that we caused. You know, we were able to get some picks from Kavika now with Peyton Wilgar, and, and uh, turning him into points helps us out. Another touchdown run from Jaron Hall, and unfortunately that would be his last touch of the night. Uh, he would go out soon thereafter, and so it was up to uh, Baylor Romney to take BYU home. And we've seen that probably a few times in his backyard. Baylor to Gunner. And then Micah Simon on a well-run screenplay. And had to wait a little bit for the signal, but it came. He got in, and BYU takes the 28-14 uh, lead. What a well-run play that one was there. Yeah, and, and you know, that, that, that's executed really well. And, and Talon taking on two guys and blocking, so... Uh, the screen game really worked with Lopini here and created to create some uh, some big plays. Uh, the receivers, tight ends, and, and, and running and the O-linemen blocking downfield for us. And Longest pass play of the Sitake era right there. 77 yards to Lopini Katoa. And with the score 35-14, he got him down there and he gets him in the end zone. Lopini finishes it off now with the final score of the night. BYU wins it 42-14. to Wins the old wagon wheel in the process and gets one back after Utah State beat BYU in each of the last two seasons. A really comprehensive start to finish win for BYU. Look at those numbers there. The 639 yards, the most yards of total offense since you've been the head coach, Kalani. Yeah, I, I like that. Let's keep, let's keep it going, you know, and, and I think we can uh, we'll win a lot of games if we score 42 points. So that I was really pleased with, with the offense, the way they played the game, and obviously we're not happy about the turnovers. We left some points out on the board still, and, uh, but I, I like the way that the team responded in the second half. We're going, we were into the, the locker room 21-14, and to come back and and, uh, you know, win the second half 21-0 is really good for us. Another 
positive turnover margin game for your guys, and that's been a real hallmark of this year's team is, is being clean, generally speaking, on offense. There were three in this one, including a punt muff, but you're positive in the margin. That makes a big deal. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think the turnover margin matters a lot, but uh, more than anything, it's what you do with the turnovers when uh, we were to get those turnovers and, and our offense turning them into points helps us out. And so uh, just really happy with the way our guys played. We felt like there's there some more um, big plays we could have made defensively. We talked about that as a group today. And offensively, we, you know, we felt like we, we left some points on the board, and, uh, on the field, not, not capitalizing it and making it on the board. And so that's something that we can keep working on. But uh, for the most part, really proud of our, our coaches um, for the game plan that they put forward and then the players and the, the leadership that our guys have. And then just a we use a lot of different bodies that just you can kind of sense that they're starting to understand how to how it works now and mm -hmm. i think the preparation that we had leading up to this game was really important it was a tale of two halves and two quarterbacks again uh, jaron hall handled the first half left the game and we'll talk about him a little bit later uh but baylor romney comes in and, and takes byu in and and baylor's been tremendous uh both in relief a couple of times and as a starter for you man it's nice to have a quarterback room that deep isn't it yeah and i thought i thought the uh you know the I guess, yeah, Michael wants to make sure that everybody knows he threw a pass, too. <laughs> yeah. He was uh, a high school quarterback. He was. Day, and, yeah. and, you know, I just I was really impressed with the, the variety of throws and just the different things that we did offensively. Just really impressed with the game plan that those coaches put together. And, and uh, you know, it, it was interesting that we scored that many points and had that many yards, but, but we didn't um, get a pass to Matt Bushman. And, and uh, that, well, that's... You... You almost had a touchdown to Matt Bushman, yeah. and then all of a sudden the play comes back on a, on a timeout that was called that we didn't hear. I didn't hear a whistle. The whistle was, was after he scored the touchdown, which was kind of odd, you know. But, yeah, yeah, a little bit. Um, <laughs> but I think they got the ineligible man downfield on that on on on, on their touchdown, you know, later in the second half. But uh, Matt demands a lot of attention, and and so uh, in coverage, he he was he. You see the things that he did on the field, blocking downfield, and uh, he was a big part of our success in that game, and then. Although it doesn't show up in the stat line, I think I think he did the little things that mattered the most, which is block downfield and and take up some some coverage, you know, and open it up for his teammates. A couple of weeks ago uh, in the Boise game, we had brothers get interceptions in the same game, Isaiah and Jackson, and then one game later, we have the first brother-to-brother -brother touchdown in BYU football history as a Baylor throws uh, to Gunner. The Romneys were in the sibling spotlight on Saturday. Yeah, and I'm just really happy for them. And, and they, these guys, after practice every day. Uh, you'll see the two brothers playing catch. You Mom know, gave so. Gunner the blanket, not Baylor, by the way, just for the <laughs> record. So, uh. well, I think Baylor had the long sleeves on, and, and he had the hand warmer, and Gunner was trying to be tough without <laughs> sleeves. So that, I think Mom made a wise decision there. Okay, now, now to Jaron for a bit. Uh, he cleared con con concussion protocol, got back to full health, and was having a heck of a night. I mean, he just really was. He was showing you everything that makes Jaron Hall so tough to defend. He goes out again. Um, what do we know about his status here on, on, on this night? And what can you say about how he played before going out? Well, I mean, the status, we, it was still waiting on, on uh, you know, it was a day-to-day -day thing. And, and um, our mindset is to just make sure that he's healthy. That's, that's all that matters right now. And football would have, to, would have to be, you know, something that's way down the list on, on, on making sure that he's healthy and ready to go. And once we get him back and better than ever, then we'll be ready to play him. But uh, the competition that, that he and Baylor had during the two weeks, you know, and, and, and prepping for this game, and uh, it was amazing. Those guys got better from it, and the, the support that they helped had in that room was was amazing. So uh, I, I was impressed with, with how those guys worked together, and uh, Jaron was a, a huge uh, support when, when Baylor went back in the second half and, and finished out the game, and um, Joe, th that whole group, that whole room I feel comfortable with, and so... Uh, but it's nice that they get a lot of attention, but they, they've set the kind of set the example for the other position groups and how to work. And um, yeah, I just was, we were really impressed with Jaron. That's why he started the game. But we knew that Baylor could get us get us in the right spot, and we know that Joe Critchell can do the same. And we feel confident with Rhett Riley as well. So Jaron's trying to get back. Uh, you know that uh, Baylor's uh, good to go. We saw Joe. Meantime, there's Zach Wilson, cast is off, and he's been working. So how close is he to getting back uh, and getting on the field for you? Yeah, he's, he's uh, starting to throw now, and so we'll see how it works. You know, um, I think if you ask him, he'll be ready. But he's mean not, ready for this week? He's not the one that makes the decision. Right. Are you yeah, talking about so. this week being ready? He, was, he, he said he, well, he wanted to play safety two weeks ago. So <laughs> um, if it's up to him, he wants to play in the game. But, you know, and, and, and I, I, I love the fact that he wants to be on the field and help the team win at whatever capacity. And, and it doesn't matter the position for him, but he's a quarterback, and, and we'll get him right uh, when, when 
medical staff tells us he's ready to go, then we'll, we'll, we'll go with them. So this early in the week, we really don't know who will take the first snaps against Liberty on the weekend. No, I'm probably not going to tip our hand yet right now, but we'll kind of, if there's a, a slight chance that, that those guys can play, then, then we're going to wait until, until we see it. Okay. What a solid game, by the way, from the young running backs uh, we had Saturday in Logan. The sophomore, Lupini Katoa, uh, the freshman, Sione Finau, uh, they combined for almost 250 yards from scrimmage. What a great night for those two guys. Yeah, and they've been doing this. I mean, the, the preparation that they put into and the time that they put into working and uh, when, whenever their numbers call, they're, they're ready for the moment. And so I was really, I mean, just watching Sione and the things that he does, uh, you know, to get ready for this moment and the preparation that he does and how they, he works with Lopini and A.J. Stewart and, and, and with Tyson and Sue, that whole group, McChesney, that those guys are, are ready to roll. And, and uh, I think they're just, just, just chomping at the bit, waiting for their number to be called to get out there. And uh, it's the little things that they do well, as well as, as like the pass protection, running their routes. Um, it's not just when they have the ball in their hands. They do a lot of the little things that, that, uh, goes, that go unnoticed, just like what Matt Bushman did. And uh, that stuff matters a lot to these guys. And then uh, if you watch when Lopini makes a big play, their other running backs are just as fired up like, as if they did it. So that's a good thing to have. We'll visit with Lopini here in studio a little bit later on. Uh, speaking of pass pro, offensive line, you get Keanu Saliaponga back this past week. Mm -hmm. He goes in at guard because Blake Freeland's playing so well at that right tackle as, as a freshman. Uh, you've had guys deeper down the depth chart come in and really contribute for you on the on the front five. Yeah, and you know we we have the ability with the way um, Coach Grimes and Mateos works with the O line that those guys can play different spots, you know, and and so um, we know Keanu can play outside and inside and everything but center, and we know Tristan can play all five positions. We know that James can play all five positions, so it gives us a little bit of flexibility and trying to get the right five out there to help us, uh, you know, best chance to win. Um, you know, Clark Barrington did some really good things in relief of, of the absence of, of Keanu and, and um, with the injury to Kiefer and Tristan Hodge and, and, and uh, Thomas Schof. So uh, it's a good group and they're young and we get them all back next year. So they work really well together and, and just randomly at practice, we'll see James Empey playing tackle and things mm -hmm. like that. So that's a huge, huge, huge uh, compliment to what the coaches are working with there and then the players and how they, they learn the scheme and not just their one position. Has it been so random that uh, Micah Simons put on the green jersey and just started up at quarterback yet? No? No, I think, I mean, Micah wants to play quarterback too. It's just all these guys want to play everything but their own position. <laughs> um, but, you know, right now we're, we're going to, I love the fact that they learned the game and they, they understand all the positions. And um, we have guys that, that play receiver and tight end that know how to play the, know the center and the, and the right tackles job too. So uh, it's just, it's clicking really well right now. Let's keep the momentum going. And, um, you know, stay paused and keep working to these guys because this is a great opportunity for us to learn from uh, what we've gone through with the Utah State game. But uh, we're, we're facing uh, another challenge this weekend, and our guys have to have the same mindset like we're going to go in there, and then we have to be at our best this weekend. Okay, a word about the other side of the ball for a minute, though. The uh, tenacious D from BYU uh, making a name for itself on the takeaway front, Kalani. 18 turnovers gained right now on the year, including 12 in the last four games. Top eight, or rather tied for eighth in the FBS in takeaways. Uh, one and a half picks per game is the top five number. Uh, the turnover margin is a top ten number. You have 12 picks on the year, and ten of them come from that great linebacker crew. A lot of good defensive numbers to talk about right now. Yeah, I just uh, the, the players have really taken the initiative of, of playing um, better defense and more assignment sound defense, but they're keeping each other accountable, and, and they're listening to their coaches, the demands that their coaches are, are making of them. And, uh, you know, it, it's we've been through some tough spots uh, defensively, and I thought the, they've responded really well. You know, the players and coaches, and uh, it's starting to work really nice right now. So we're gaining momentum on, in on defense as well. And, and you know, I think the, the key is to just stop people from scoring points and be disruptive. We we still have a lot of plays out there that we left on the field and mm -hmm. sacks and TFLs and um, some turnovers, some picks. You know, I think we had our hand on could have had two or three more interceptions, and so. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to see us capitalize on those moments and make those plays, but uh, I think the effort has been amazing from, from the entire team, and defensively, uh, you can make up for mistakes with your effort and, and hustle to the ball, and we're getting a lot of bodies around the ball carrier, which is a good sign. Well, things are in a, in a good spot from 2-4 and four to 4-4 four and four now, and hopefully more wins to come. That's our first segment. All right, for your day-to-day -day Cougar Sports play-by-play -play watch, BYU Sports Nation. With Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan, weekdays at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Tomorrow, the guys will chat with David Nixon, as well as preview the men's basketball season, which tips off 
tomorrow night. When we come back, the Cougars discuss their head coach. And what you need to know about the Liberty Flames are coming to Provo this Saturday. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. We kissed last night. What? It was Steve or Ben. I hope it was Ben who reminds me of your father. Mom, what are you doing here? I need to make sure that you're eating right, so I'm moving in. What? No, Mom, there's not enough room. I've solved that problem. Don't worry, Jenny's fine with it. Who wants waffles? Huh? Yeah. BYU meal plans, because mom shouldn't be there. Call it a path. Or way through. It can be arrow straight, or have twists and turns. It's life's financial journey, and Mountain America Credit Union is here to guide you every step of the way. With timely advice and affordable products, this is your journey. Let's begin together. We're Mountain America, guiding you forward. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Get outside with the ones you love and enjoy the open road. And the closed one. We believe in family, fun, and experiences that last. And we want to be there as you make new memories over and over again. That's why we're proud to carry the popular Nissan Rogue. Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. Family owned since 1968. Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. Back with more of BYU football with Kalani Sitake. Saturday, pregame coverage of BYU and Liberty begins as soon as the men's basketball game is over. That'll be around 6 o'clock Eastern time on BYU TV. We'll go at 6.30 Eastern on BYU Radio for pregame coverage. The game will be on ESPNU and BYU Radio. And then postgame, come to both BYU TV or and BYU Radio to get everything that uh, happened in game. Well, the Liberty Flames are a fellow FBS independent, uh, six and three on the year. The Flames out of Lynch Lynchburg, Virginia, by the way. Uh, they're not yet bowl eligible, despite the fact they've got six wins already because uh, they have two FCS wins. You can only count one uh, toward bowl eligibility. Not the toughest schedule in the world to this point, but Kalani, they're scoring 34 points a game. Yeah, and they're, they're uh, a seasoned group. You know, you look at uh, the quarterback, um, you know, and they have a really, really athletic uh, um, receiver that has, I think he's second in the nation in, rece in receiving yards. Yes, yeah. And, um, you know, uh, and then, so I, I think that, that they're a really explosive team and, and they, they can do a lot of different things to hurt you. And offensively, they can score a lot of points. Defensively, they disrupt a lot. So, uh, you know, this is a big time game for us and we're looking forward to the matchup. And they're an independent team that has, a, that they have an honor code as well. You know, and they're, they're a Christian-based school as well, so I think there's a lot of similarities and looking forward to the matchup of, the, of them coming to our house. I think we'll, 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 we'll enjoy sharing the field with them. This is a series too, right? You'll be heading to their place. Yeah, yeah, looking forward to the game. I mean, they have, they have a really good coaching staff. and Hugh Freeze, uh, he, he has a really experienced coaching staff as well, so, and a lot of athleticism and, and, and talent on their team. So uh, we're, we know that it's going to be a challenge. We're looking forward to it. We, we, I've said this before every week, every week I say that we're expecting their best shot. We need to make sure that they get ours. Let's uh, talk about a couple of the names that uh, fans will be seeing and hearing from Liberty. Educate you about the Flames. Uh, we'll start with uh, the quarterback, Stephen Buckshot Calvert. And yes, uh, Buckshot is his legal middle name. Not a nickname, it's his legal middle name, and he goes by Buckshot. Uh, he had almost uh, 450 passing yards in the first half of the <laughs> game against UMass on Saturday. Great talent. He... he, he uh, he can attack you deep with with his with his arm, really accurate arm, and and he has some really good good uh, talent to throw to, athleticism and 
the receiver, tight end position, and running back. So uh, they can run the ball and they can throw the ball, and they're, they're going to be a, they're going to be a hard team to deal with. And look at the rankings, you know that he's done that, and he he's, uh, Buckshot's gone to Baylor and won a game when he was a sophomore, yep. you know. And, and so th those guys are, are, are seniors now, and and they're veterans, and they're still putting up a lot of points. So we, we have to be ready for this one. The passing record he set for Liberty at Baylor is the one he broke himself uh, this past weekend against UMass before leaving the game. The wide receiver you mentioned, his name is Antonio Gandhi Golden, uh, second nationally in receiving yards, a third in yards per game, top 20 in yards per catch. He's like, a, I guess you could liken him to, you know, you know, Andy Isabella last. He's there, Andy Isabella, right? Just really big. You know, he's he's 6'4", 220. Great ball Not the same skills. size as Andy, but the same yeah. kind of go-to. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And you can see the, the ball skills that he has. He caught that one uh, the earlier clip with one hand, and, and he's a he's a he's a tough kid to deal with. He's gonna, I mean, these guys are uh, you know Beautiful, he, he's yeah. a, a shot to play in the NFL, and I think he, I think he's going to be one of the best receivers taken in the draft. But uh, you know, and they have a quarterback that that's comfortable throwing the ball and has been through a lot of games, so a lot of a lot of experience in this in this offense and this team, and uh, looking forward to the matchup. But he's going to be a tough one. Now, since I bring up Andy, the UMass receiver from last year, you really did zone in on him, focus in, and he, he, he got some balls, but he didn't kill you like he had a lot of teams last year. Yeah, and I think he, he, he went on the next week and punished Georgia, you know. Yeah. So uh, we, we know what their, their go-to guys are. That they know it too, but um, they also have a lot of great athletes on the team that can play. If you look at what we did against Utah State, when you would say Matt Bushman would be our number one target, he didn't catch a ball, but the rest of the, t the rest of the guys, uh, the, the crew came came and delivered, and we got a lot of yards too, and a lot of points. So uh, we're going to have to be not focused just on one guy. We know what their primary targets may be on certain routes, but I think the fundamental part of football is going to be important, just tackling well and and making sure that we're assignment sound and, and just play the fundamental part of the game well. Last segment, we talked about your duo of, of Finau and Katoa from Utah State. Uh, Liberty coming in has their own running back duo, Joshua Mack and Frankie Hickson are the one-two punch for the Flames. They've combined for nearly 1,200 rushing yards. And if you look at those numbers, Kalani, they're almost dead even, too, in terms of uh, who does what. Yeah, and they're explosive athletes. They, they, they're, they're, uh, they have a lot of plays with just big play runs, you know, runs past 20 yards. And uh, they're dangerous. They're a dangerous group. And they have a big old line that can block from up front. So their scheme allows them to be a little bit balanced where they can uh, utilize three wideouts or two tight ends, you know, in certain sets with 12 personnel and 11 personnel and, and really difficult to deal with. And they run a, gr a really effective RPO system and um, they, they can attack in a lot of different ways. And so the run, whether it's run game or the throw game, we, we have to be ready for all of it. Their, their defensive numbers lag a little bit, um, but they are a top 30 team in TFL, so they can get after you at times. Uh, turnover margin nowhere near BYU. They're kind of middle of the pack that way. But these are a couple of the names that uh, people will hear on the weekend. Jesse Lemonnier and uh, Seneca Espinoza. And again, you can see that tackle for number, uh, tackle for loss number prominent with Lemonnier. That's the one thing they do pretty well is they can uh, they can be disruptive in the backfield. Yeah, and they're active and, and really athletic and and, uh, and uh, big. So they, they pose a lot of issues for our pass pro. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to be important for us to be able to establish of the run game and, and, and being able to throw the ball. So uh, being balanced, I think it's important to try to keep them at bay, but I, I think it's just going to be hard to do that with, with the pressure that they bring and the athleticism that show up front. So you're playing for a bowl game. They're playing for a bowl game, or at least to be bowl eligible. They need, again, they need two more wins because they've got that two F, those two FCS wins. They play you, then they play, uh, they play at Virginia, then they finish off with New Mexico State. They've got that home-and-home -home arrangement where they're playing New Mexico State twice this year. Yeah, they already beat them at their place. Yeah, I mean, the, the, for what they've already done in, in nine games, it's pretty impressive. The stats that they're putting up on, on offense and defense, and and uh, I think their kickoff team is pretty good too. You know, looking at their their, their the special teams part of it, so they're well balanced, and I th I think the uh, and they they're, they're effective in all three phases, and uh, that that's a huge. Um, if you're looking at it, that that's the result they have with so much experience in the coaching staff and. Those guys work really hard, so I, I think it's going to be a great matchup. Okay, that's your look at Liberty. As we head to break, we want you to know that you can still enjoy that full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday, kitchen and large grassy backyard, along the Provo River Trail, all at the residence in Marriott in Provo. Mondays, 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific, we talk BYU football with the coordinators on the Coordinators Corner with Jeff Grimes, Eli Satuiaki, and Ed Lamb. This week's show was earlier today. It's also on demand now on the BYU TV app. Later in the show, we'll chat with Lofini Katoa in studio.
The coach takes your questions as well. And from social media, what do his players think of him? This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Are you looking for a better way to deliver results this year? Expanding your product line or building new locations? How about your online presence? Does it need a boost? Maybe you just want to put a little more distance between you and the competition. Tap into the powerful engine of BYU Athletics and let us put together a plan unique to your business. We can provide you with the tools designed to enhance your brand on a local, regional, or national level. We invite your team to join ours. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really? They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. I'm Dave McCann. Tomorrow on After Further Review, we look back at Utah State and we look ahead to the next home game against Liberty. It's the best hour of BYU football on television. Former Cougars Blaine Fowler and David Nixon explain the game tomorrow at 7 Eastern, 5 Mountain, 4 Pacific on the BYU TV app and BYUtv.org. You can also see it Wednesday mornings at 11 Eastern and again Saturday morning at 9 Eastern on BYU TV. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Well, each week we hear what uh, players and coaches have to say about various subjects at this point in the program. Tonight, the subject happens to be the head ball coach, Kalani Sitake. He's, uh, he's a great man. He's a great head coach. And he's definitely one of those guys who will do anything for us. A great head coach. Really awesome coach. It's easy to see that he wants to win. He's intense and... Um, but he loves, he puts the players first. He doesn't, um, you know, put his, his desires of, of winning over, you know, the individual. I would say like a father figure. I mean, Kalani I've known for a long time and he has just been the most down to earth guy. I have so much love for that man and I, and I don't tell him that often and I probably should. He probably should know how I feel about him. He's done so much for us, for our team, for me personally. I can't, I honestly cannot handle it. Me and Kalani go the way back. He's, he's helped me through some tough situations. Uh, he's a father figure to me. Um, I'm grateful for him um, and everything that he's done for me and my family. Uh, so I, I'll give my life for the man. Not bad looking, <laughs> right? So I can... <laughs> um, Semi-talented, but for some reason I can coach football. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. That's good stuff. Yay. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> I didn't know they were recording that part. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, how would you rate life as a football coach? I love it. I love it. Um, just when you get to be around those type of young men, you know, and, and, and the fans. I mean, I wish I could hear um, just the fans talk about their passion for the BYU because I could hear that all day. I could do it. And then. So I just feel blessed to be in this position and be around such great people. It's, 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 it's hard to, I think Bracken said it best, it's hard for me to even explain it, but uh, uh, it's, it's awesome experience. Q&A time now on the Sitake Show. We've got uh, live audience questions queued up. Let's start right here in Studio C with Gary Kinney. Hello, Gary. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Hi, Gary. I know you played back in the 80s, 90s. When was it? 90s, yeah. Head athlete, your head athletic trainer. I was, playing, I was playing in the 80s just for a different your school. Your head athletic yeah. trainer at that time was George Curtis, and uh -huh. you know, he passed away recently. I'd just like to know your feelings on George and what he's meant to the football program here at BYU. Oh, George is awesome. And, and uh, you know, we, we, that's a wonderful thing about BYU is we have these relationships with, with 
equipment managers and counselors and advisors and academics and teachers um, and trainers. And so George was awesome in the training room. Uh, he just he found ways to connect with with um, with the players and in such a different level, you know, than than um, I just you just knew that he cared about you and he loved you. And so uh, whether it was um, you know, going to a, a, a member, one of our players that would get baptized, he'd be there and they'd ask him to do the baptism. And he was just always available and always willing to help people out. And I think he took a bunch of, of our players out who'd never ridden on a horse and showed them how to ride a horse and things like that. And I don't know if Coach Edwards was really excited about that part, you know, <laughs> but um, he just was willing to do whatever it took to, to, to invest his life in other other people. And I I, I tweeted out. I just sent a tweet out to his family. Just thank you for sharing uh, their, you know, their 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 dad or their grandfather or husband for us. And so I, I benefit from his love and his care. You you run out a number of flags before every game, and this past Saturday at uh, at Utah State there was a, a George Curtis uh, tribute flag that uh, Steve Pincock, who's the current head trainer, got to run out for the team, right? Yep, and it was a uh, it was an emotional time, you know. Uh, Steve was uh, getting ready to run it out, and I, I could see the emotions in his face. And, uh, it just makes you think of all the other trainers that we had, you know, that, that Oli and, and Gay and others that, that have been, been there for us and other managers and people that have passed on, you know, like Floyd Johnson and others that have just been so instrumental in helping our, shape us young men into who we are now. And that's just a beautiful thing. That's why beautiful. So, so it's beautiful to have BYU around and the connection that we have at the school. It's, there's nothing else like it. One more question uh, from here in Studio C. We have Chloe now. Is it you? Are you Chloe? Hello, Chloe. You're talking to the coach. What's your favorite thing to do with your kids? With my kids? I like to do whatever they want to do. So <laughs> um, I have a daughter that loves art, and I'm, I'm really horrible at it, but I'll try it, you know, <laughs> and, and she loves plays, and I never really cared about Broadway plays, and so I love them now. You know, and, and um, I know a lot of the songs on Matilda <laughs> and things like that. So and that's because of my, my daughter and I have another daughter that loves dance. And so we'll do a lot of things in dance. And I know choreographers for some reason because I, I know she's so she's into dance. She's at dances at the dance club here in, in, in Orem. And so um, and then my son is getting into football and we'll play catch for hours because he he wants to be a receiver. I think it's because Uncle Fessy is a receivers coach, but you know, I, I'm, my wife's trying to talk him to be a kicker. So I, I'll do whatever my kids want to do. <laughs> I'll play Fortnite. I'll learn dances. I'll do whatever, <laughs> whatever I can. Whatever my kids want to do, it's up to them. Chloe, thanks for your question. All right, wonderful. Heading to break. Uh, fans, join us tomorrow night for the men's basketball season opener against Cal State Fullerton. That's at nine Eastern, six Pacific on BYU TV and BYU Radio. We'll have the pregame on the radio an hour before tip time. Coming up after the break, this week's Deep Blue profile feature looks at an amazing young man named Wyatt Page. And Lopini Katoa joins us in studio. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. This is where we dominate. Our playground, place of business. This is our promised land where we seek to find ourselves and we're here to make sure the spaces our best prove themselves on appear how they should intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for byu athletics Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From personal injury to business law and from adoption to bankruptcy, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. Have a car wreck? Martin's Collision Repair. Right 
repair the right, paint the right choice. Martin's Collision Repair. Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake on BYU TV, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. Time for our Cougars in the NFL update. Fred Warner with the only undefeated team now in the NFL, the San Francisco 49ers. Back on that Thursday night game, nine tackles, four solo stops. The Niners beat the Cardinals. Jamal Williams. Wow, that's five straight games with a touchdown. A loss to uh, Michael Davis's L.A. Chargers. Daniel Sorensen with the Kansas City Chiefs with four stops. They got a win over Minnesota on the weekend. The first loss of the year for the New England Patriots, by the way. Last night to Baltimore, there was KVN with the five solo stops and a quarterback hit on his stat line. All right, in uh, this week's edition of our new feature called Deep Blue, we profile a BYU superfan named Wyatt Page. He's a young man who's currently in a battle for his life. He was featured recently as one of the team's True Blue heroes at BYU football practice where he inspired the Cougs. This is Deep Blue. Uh, my name is Wyatt Page. I'm 12 years old. I have terminal brain cancer, and I'm a BYU fan. <laughs> I didn't know what to do. <laughs> in September, of 2019 after his 19 month battle. The diagnosis was terminal. And that's hard. Going into my first surgery, I was obviously nervous, um, but my family was there and I was just uh, kind of sc really scared actually. You think about wishing you'd spent more time together not working that extra hour or two or wishing you'd taken time to go to lunch together. It was very clear that, you know, we were on, on a special mission that was about to embark. Wyatt is a 12-year-old boy from Saratoga Spring uh, who was nominated by Coach Kalani himself. We had, had been contacted from uh, a ward member here that knows Kalani, and he asked us if Wyatt would be interested in going down and touring the facility, going down and meeting Kalani. I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. And we got down there, and of course, we were able to tour the facility, which is awesome. It was fun. We got to uh, watch a video of all the, of the team, uh, like, chanting my name and everything, and that was, I was like, oh. <laughs> And then it turned into something more, to say the least. The experience, the mindset that I had when I was going into that was that I wanted him to feel like he was a part of our family. He was our brother and could ask us for anything that he needed. Ethan presented the team. Um, they just kind of were encouraging, and he was just saying, like, uh, we love you. Uh, we're were so supportive of you, gave me like a little swag bag, I guess, and then they started pulling everything out and it was like, we got Monday, Tuesday. And they just gave me a bunch of cool stuff for BYU and everything and it was, it was pretty cool. We were shocked and, uh, and it was a really neat experience to see athletes that are finely tuned express their love and, and concern and brotherhood towards Wyatt. It was an amazing experience that I don't think any of us will ever forget. It was important that we tell the team how much uh, they mean to so many different people and so many uh, fans and 
although uh, they're struggling through a loss and, and uh, some inconsistent football playing. They, I think it was important that they understand their purpose is not just to play football, it's to help people's lives and make a difference. When you have someone like Wyatt and all these other Tribal heroes who come and visit your practice and you hear of their story, you really find out what a, a hardship really is. Um, and that even though we all want to win games and losing is tough, it just puts things into perspective that we should still be grateful that we're able to be out here and play a game that we love. And just because it's not going our way, it shouldn't stop us from just putting our head down and going to work because people have it way worse. And so to see guys like Wyatt come in with a smile on his face when his life is on the line, it really helps us put a smile on our face to be grateful for um, everything we have. I think we recognize and, and Coach Kalani has helped us recognize what an opportunity we have where we're at. Because we play football, people look to us and we have an opportunity to, to be a blessing in their lives. I think the whole team understands that and we love seeing people like Wyatt and, and sharing those experiences with them where they're able to feel our love and using our position as football players to, to make them feel loved. For them to do that, Obviously, they were they were um, needing something as much as Wyatt was needing something, and so the, the two of them to to be able to get together and do that, I think they've inspired each other. I don't know at what level on each front, but I know for Wyatt it was a pretty neat day, and for those big guys to come and hang out with with a little kid and and share their heartfelt emotion was really neat. It's an unfortunate circumstance, but we've met fantastic friends along the way because of it, and are just grateful for those who've helped with wise care. I mean, it makes a huge difference having um, doctors and nurses and everybody who cares so much and who'll do whatever to help out, you know? And we're just grateful for, I mean, and it's weird to say, but it's, it's great, we're grateful for the opportunity. I mean, we look at it as an, as an opportunity rather than, than and a trial, but I mean, it's, it's, an, it's an, been an opportunity. As a father, it's brutally heartbreaking to watch someone that you care about so much. Losing uh, the battle of, against cancer, but not losing the battle of life. I want Wyatt to know that I love him and that I'm proud of him. Well, the uh, True Blue Hero program is a great program, and it's full of great young men like, uh, like Wyatt Page. It is, and uh, we're just better people um, because of him and the other True Blue Heroes, and so. It's what I talked about before, why this place is so special. And um, I'm just honored to be here. Well, we're honored to be a small part of it with you. Kalani, thank you for that. Well, tonight's player guest uh, broke out for more than 170 yards from scrimmage on Saturday against Utah State, including the longest play of the season, that 77-yard screenplay we saw earlier. And he's not even a wide receiver. He followed Kalani to Oregon State and now to BYU, and tonight he follows him into Studio C. Let's welcome in Lopini Cato. Lopini, good to see you. How are you? Good. Good. All right. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. And now I, I, I haven't always seen you with this going on. Is this a recent <laughs> decision? New. Yeah, since yesterday. <laughs> yeah? Brand new. What does Dad think about it? I don't know. I Let's haven't find out. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think there, Dad? <laughs> let, him, let him do whatever, right on. Uh, so we're just a, a little more than a, than a day and change removed from that big win at Utah State. Uh, what did it mean uh, for you and the guys to take back the wagon wheel Saturday night? Oh, it felt so good. It felt so good to be able to go out and, and mostly just perform to our potential and, and just just be who we are, really. And then just to do it against them just, meant, just felt so good, especially uh, coming off of last year. 
seeing what that what happened last year. So it felt, felt awesome. Did you get a chance to help lift it, or was it was it already up in the air when you got around there? No, I, I never picked it up. But <laughs> <laughs> it took a it took a group of guys though. It did. Uh, you had 129 yards receiving, including the longest play of the season. Uh, the screenplay in particular uh, was really working on Saturday night, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Uh, what particular about a screen do you do you find uh, either exciting or or fits your style? Uh, I just like uh, how it works out with the, with the blocking, just to be able to bypass a few guys on the D line and and just work upfield and set up those blocks for the for the O lineman working downfield. Um, I really like just feeling those blocks out. At this point, are you thinking I'm going in? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yeah, was a tough one, but yeah. It's kind of tough to do a full speed, by the way, running stiff arm behind you and then carry it for like yeah. 10 yards, which you did. And then once you got, it was good to finally get in though, right? You got to finish off the sequence by getting into the end zone. Yeah, luckily they, they put me back in right there. Uh, did touchdowns ever get boring? No, never. <laughs> they never get boring. Okay, well, you're double digits and counting right now. Uh, Kalani, how have you seen uh, Lopini evolve after a great first season for you to what he's doing now? Well, he, he was a great talent in high school when he was at AF, you know. So when we, we uh, he was a teammate with James Empey, and, and they they did some really good things. But I, one thing I noticed when we were recruiting him is he never came off the field. He was always on the field, special teams, offense, defense. And uh, and so really, I, I liked the part that he was always on the field and didn't, didn't want to ever come off and help his team have some success, you know. And, but he was doing, he does the little things that matter the most. And you watch the way he prepares, it's just, there's something special about him uh, when we were recruiting him, and I thought I was going to make him into a safety. And, and um, when I got the head job here, and you know, I was really excited that he called me after his mission and <laughs> changed his recruiting over. You know, and um, because I don't recruit missionaries, he did it. He recruited us, and just felt like this is the right place for him to be. And, and uh, you know, he's making a lot of plays. He has a, a great future in football, and and and, and at BYU he's going to make tons more plays. So looking forward to seeing him play and. He's really proud of him. He's got a wonderful family, you know. He's got a wonderful mother and, 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 and father and siblings that, that have been such a great support to him. And I think they should, I mean, he comes from a great family, so he's, it, they should be really proud of things that he does on and off mm. the field. It seems like the, and it's maybe gets it maybe an overused phrase, but uh, turn the corner. It feels like the offense maybe turned a bit of a corner here in the last couple of games against Boise and Utah State. Do you see you guys having hit a bit of a stride offensively? Yeah, uh, definitely. It feels good to to put drives together and and I think our biggest problem was just finishing them off and so we've been able to do the do that um, in the last couple of weeks. How great was it along with that theme to score in every quarter at Utah State and kind of feel like you just kind of kept it going start to finish. That's been a trouble too trying to keep it going for a full four quarters. It was yeah. really rolling that way. Yeah I think it just speaks to just our passion and, and how much we wanted it and how much we've been wanting it um, for the past couple of weeks and and yeah so it just showed in our play. You went by the name Zach previously. We now know you as Lopini. Uh, describe the change, why you were one thing, and now we call you another. <laughs> Honestly, I don't really know <laughs> like why that switched over, but it just did. I, all my family calls me Lopini. That's just like what I'm, if I'm close to you, that's just what people know me as, is Lopini or Pini. Um, so like, I think everybody just started getting closer to me and <laughs> then made the switch. Let's just go with it. Mm -hmm. um, you, you mentioned a little bit about it, AF, and w when when did you, First, remember becoming acquainted with him uh, as as a player. Well, I know I know the family, you know, and so um, I knew of the family, and you, we knew them well. And so when we kind of just know when a kid gets older to <laughs> keep following him, you know. And so when he became uh, recruitable, he was always a great athlete, and uh, when he was younger, and, and a long lineage of athletic people in their family. So the, the Cartoros played a lot of football, and so. Uh, when it was his time, we just knew that he was going to be something. And I really didn't know what he was going to play in, in college yet because I just knew that I, I wanted him. And then at the time, I was a defensive coordinator, so I thought he could, the instincts that he had on the defensive side was amazing. So I thought I could make him to a safety. And uh, when he got here, he something must have happened on the mission. He liked, liked carrying the ball more. So he, he wanted to play running back first. And, you know, he, he could do a lot of things out of, out of the backfield. We, I, I mentioned in the post game that, they kind of remind you of the old school BYU games where the, where the running backs actually caught the ball quite a bit. And Lopini can run routes. He can do a lot of different things with the ball in his hands. And he can run routes as a, as a receiver. Um, Matt he, Bellini types, right? Yeah, exactly. Matt <laughs> Bellini type, you know. And so I, I think it was really cool that he was able to get, you know, be the, 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 the leading rusher and be the player of the game. Yeah. Uh, you didn't end up at Oregon State. You came here. But you have a cousin still at Oregon State. Is that right? Did you have a cousin? Yeah, I did. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that Thor? Thor. Yeah, he was over there. Okay. 
Uh, Thor's not the most common name for non-Marvel superheroes. Um, so uh, tell us a bit about Thor. What does he do? Thor, uh, I think he actually, he has, he medically retired. He had, oh, he's not playing anymore? No, he's not. What he, was he playing up there? He was playing linebacker, uh, D-line. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, he just had some injuries, knees, and couldn't get over those. So he had to, had to hang it up. Your dad's with us tonight. Now, he looks more like a real Thor, actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, did, did you guys uh, ever work out together? <laughs> yeah, always. We always worked out uh, growing up. Remember him sometimes forcing me out the house to <laughs> go to the rec center with him, but, you know, it paid off. Uh, I just got used to, to working hard and working with him and my older brother. Uh, they both are a lot bigger than me, so I had to try to keep up. Yeah, well, uh, keeping up and then some. Uh, a quick word about the running back room before we talk about uh, Liberty and the rest of the season. Uh, you lost Tyson. That, that that has to really hurt. Uh, you got to know him, I guess, pretty quickly, pretty well, though, right? Yeah, definitely. So, and who knows if he gets to still play some more football with us. I cross fingers on that one. How would you describe the running back room right now? I think uh, everybody's just really passionate, um, willing to do whatever the offense needs us to do, and and we see that things can change so fast. Mm. Um, we're used to it from last year. We had a, you know, people had to step up at the end of the season. And so I think just everybody knows that, you know, it could be your time. And so everybody's super just hungry to, to learn and to be ready. Okay, you're four and four now on the season. You're playing for a bowl game. You're playing to win out. Uh, you got Liberty coming into town on Saturday. Your thoughts on maybe an early look at what you know. It's early in the week, of course, but a thought about Liberty and what maybe is ahead for this football team. Uh, to me, I think this is a huge week for us. Um, to me personally, I feel like this is so important for us coming off of uh, two big wins to to not overlook Liberty and to know that they're a great team just because, uh, you know, they may not be a, a huge school that you hear about all the time. Uh, they're still, they have great talent. Um, they're capable of putting up a lot of points. And so on the offensive side, um, we love that. We love the challenge to, to be able to score a lot. What's it like to play for this guy? It's awesome. <laughs> uh, just like the feeling of love and family uh, to be able to to know how much he cares, um, how passionate he is, um, how willing he is to, to have your back and to help you out. Um, and also just to have fun, you know, just to enjoy uh, the process of, of football because at times it can be stressful. So it's awesome. What's his emotional impact on this team, do you think? I think it, it's everything. And it showed, like, like I said, in the last two weeks, the passion that, we, that we've been playing with is, is really like what he's been preaching to us. Um, and for whatever reason, it, it took a little bit to click. But yeah, I, I think, uh, his passion and his love shows in how, in how we played uh, last week. Um, we just wanted it, and, and it goes to show like uh, what he preaches to us. Well, Lopini, it was fun having you in tonight. Uh, I'm from watching you play this season. Uh, best of luck the rest of the way, and thanks again. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, stick around where you are. We'll take a break. Did you know you can have your groceries waiting for you to be picked up or better yet, dropped off at your front door? It's all done online at smithsfoodanddrug.com or on their app on your phone. Download the Smiths app and save time and shop online. Break down Cougar football with Dave McCann. Blaine Fowler, David Nixon each week on After Further Review. It aired earlier tonight and is on demand on the BYU TV app or you can watch it tomorrow morning on BYU TV at 11 Eastern and 8 Pacific time. As we go to break, here's this week's trivia question. Who holds the record for longest reception in BYU football history? We know Lopini had that 77-yarder. It's not the longest ever. Which is it? We'll tell you after the break. Stay with us. My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary. And there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? 
If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. I'm Dave McCann. Tomorrow on After Further Review, we look back at Utah State and we look ahead to the next home game against Liberty. It's the best hour of BYU football on television. Former Cougars Blaine Fowler and David Nixon explain the game tomorrow at 7 Eastern, 5 Mountain, 4 Pacific on the BYU TV app and BYUtv.org. You can also see it Wednesday mornings at 11 Eastern and again Saturday morning at 9 Eastern on BYU TV. All right, before the break, we ask this trivia question. Who holds the record for longest reception in BYU football history? Not wedding reception, by the way. We have to clarify that. <laughs> uh, there have been a lot, a lot of long ones. Um, here's the answer. It's, uh, it's Eric Drage. I knew it. 97-yarder from Ty Detmer against Utah. How do we know what happened? We have video. This is the play from the end zone. There it is, all the way to the house. That's the longest pass play in BYU football history. Lopini Katoa's reception on the weekend was, uh, was 77. That was 97. All right, there you go. Hey, Saturday, it's a BYU and Liberty. Here's our game day schedule. As soon as the men's basketball game against San Diego State is over, and that tips at 2, we'll morph right into countdown to kickoff on BYU TV. Then at 6.30 Eastern, 4.30 Mountain, 3.30 Pacific, we'll start on radio after basketball postgame, then an hour of football pregame. Then we got the actual game itself, Liberty against BYU, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. You can see it on ESPN. You hear it on BYU Radio. And then postgame coverage on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Well, you're, you're just eight games in already, but just eight games in. You have four more regular seasons, hopefully a bowl game to come. How different do things feel from, let's say, after South Florida to where you are right now? Well, I think the, the main emphasis is to keep getting better, you know, and, and regardless of the outcome of the game, uh, we have to keep focus on the next week, and uh, the focus this week is to be 1-0, and you know, and to uh, do whatever we can do. Uh, we had a great practice today and great meetings, and uh, we have a good start to, to get in that way, and, and I think the preparation is the most important part right now. This is a big thing that Lavelle believed in as well, and so uh, as we prepare for it, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes throughout the week, but I think that's going to be the key is our preparation for this week and our focus on just going 1-0 and this week. Besides just the preparation and focus, has anything else been carrying over just week to week right now? Yeah, in just the word? players. I, I, I think the, I love what the players are doing, the, the belief that they have in each other, and, and uh, the way that okay. the camaraderie that we get to enjoy. Okay, good luck this weekend. All right, go Cougs. All right, for seats on next week's show, go to BYUcougars.com slash Sitake Show. We'll talk to you next Tuesday, 830 Eastern for Scott Hill, Jerem Jordan, Lopini Katoa, and the coach Kalani Sitake. I am Greg Rubel. This has been BYU Football with Kalani Sitake on BYU TV. So long. Go Cougs.